this is Bino. Welcome back to my channel. I'm an arborist and a tree climber specialist and what I like to do on my channel is share tree climbing tips with beginners and experts. What we're going to do today is show tree climbing fails and then we're going to look for examples of how to do it properly. Let's get to it. The first one up is a guy who's dropping the top without rigging. So let's, let's go through it. Whoa. So, well, let me go on this one. So on this one, what, what he did is he just put, I mean, he took too much of the top. It had a lean and there was a lot of weight. Even though it wasn't rigging, he, he probably should have um, went a little higher and started cutting some smaller branches. I mean, you could see the end result. When that whole top with that lean um, let loose, it really put a lot of uh, pressure on that stem and, and you could see his result. So, so this next one, this one is a rigging one where, where the guy's going to drop the top. So on this, whoa, man. So on here, what he has a probably a block or maybe a false crotch or something where there's a rope tied to it. I didn't see his cuts and all that, but I'm, from this, it looks like the cuts were probably done properly. Um, he has some gear on. He looks like he's got a lanyard. So um, it's a pretty good size top. Um, when you're dropping the top and then you have um, a, a, a big load like that, you, you got to let it run. On this video, so the guy on the ground is probably operating the ropes. This looks like they didn't let it run. But if you do it right, it could be really smooth. So I'll sh look up a, a clip of a guy doing it proper. So he, here's a clip. And, and I'll, I'll start it up and but here we go. He's made a notch cut, which definitely you want to do. So after he's made his notch cut, you can see he's starting to do his, okay. So he made the notch cut and now he's, he's tied his, um, his rigging knot and he's going to do his final cut here. And on this, so before he does his final cut, you can see here, I'm pretty sure it looks like right here, it looks like a kerf. So a kerf is a good thing to do. So you're dropping the top. If you, if you don't do a kerf, sometimes fibers from the side can hold on to your hinge wood. And instead of the, the whole top going the way you want it, it might get you know skewed one way or the other. So I'm, I'm assuming that there's a kerf on this side. He probably made a kerf on the other. You could see here is his notch. And he's, he's got his block down here. You go up and he has a, a half hitch. And then above his half hitch, he has a running bowline. This is like the perfect scenario. And this guy set his, his uh, drop up like perfect. So let's see what happens here. He's on his back cut. He has his hinge, letting it go. The guy on the ground did some great work. You can see, so it lets go. And you can see there's some movement on top. But when he's, um, he's just really not shaking back and forth because the guy on the ground is, is good at allowing it to run. Everything on top, this guy was perfect. It was like just picture perfect kind of work that if you're on the top and you're going to drop something um, in this negative rigging scenario, this is what you want. So this guy did perfect. He had his block ready. He cut his notch. He did some curve cuts. Now he ties his rigging setup. So he's got that good uh, half hitch. Then he's got his running bowling. Now he does his back cut and the guy on the ground is in motion. He cuts it. He lets it run. So the guy in the air, he doesn't go through that massive shake that could really mess you up. That perfect, perfect scenario. So then this is, I can't see the guy set up on top, but you know, from a distance here, it looks like he's got everything that he needs. It looks like he's in spikes, got the saddle on, and he's taking a big chunk of wood. Almost the same thing as the top. Um, big chunks of wood can be even heavier than the top, so you'd really have to have all those um, things set up. So here we go. Let's, let's see what he does. Boom. Yep. Same thing. Helmet comes locking off. Um, spike comes out. And, and when... When it let loose, you could see that that big chunk lets loose and, and as it's coming down and it hits all the weight of it, everything just shakes the heck out of this guy. 
So yeah, having having somebody that knows how to operate ropes would be huge for this kind of scenario. I mean, usually when you you're in a tree and you start going lower, um, the main stem will shake less, you know, because it's more solid. When you're at the very top, yeah, it can sway a heck of a lot more. So it's pretty scary when you're dropping tops and you're doing a negative rig thing. But when you're on the wood, usually it's not so massively shaky, right? Not letting it run. Now this scenario is just pretty, pretty scary. Now in this clip, this guy is doing the same scenario. There we go. He's just dropped his, uh, his notch out. Okay. Now he's setting up his, so here's the half hitch, right? Oh no, half hitch below. Now this is his running bowling. He's already done his half hitch. And now he's, he's done his running bowling and he's getting it all set up. Hold on, right here. Yeah, so he's got everything prepared. He's ready, now he's gonna do the back cut. So the front notch was already prepared and now he's getting his, um, where he's gonna drop it. Right, here it goes. Nice, puts the saw away, he has plenty of time. He gets prepared, now he pushes it over. Nice, let's see what happens. Oh yeah, huge wood, huge wood. And look at that, it's huge wood. He drops it and then it just sails down. The guy on the ground is just awesome. And the setup that he has, this guy's great. It's just, this is what you want guys to do. You don't wanna to have to go through those big shocking moments when you're, you know, you could slip out or um, just even get pounded into the tree, maybe spike into yourself. This is a real good scenario. It looks like he had everything in the proper way. Um, he may have even done, so even like, so if you're doing a, a, a big rig, a lot of times we talk about notches. Uh, on a normal thing, when you do a notch, it's usually one third of the main diameter of what you're gonna fell, right? So if, if you take all the weight off of a big stem and you just have a big chunk of wood and it's heavy, you can sometimes make a huge notch. Pass, you know, you break the rules. It's not really breaking the rules, because you don't have a lot of weight above. But if you're up and you're on spikes and you're gonna do a big drop with a rigging setup, you want that log to come over without you having to do a lot of force. A way to do that would be to make a huge hinge. You could do instead of a third, you can go half. You can maybe even make the hinge more than half. You can make it an open face wider than you normally would. That way, once you get to the point, if you, as long as you leave some hinge wood, right, you, you get it set up, you do the back cut, you got a good hinge. Now all you have to do is a little bit of pressure and now this whole big log will fall over. It'll, you come over very quickly, that big hinge will like slap close and fall out. Instead of you trying to just do one third and force and try to shove this huge thing in spikes up in the air, that's really too hard to do. You're not really breaking the rules if you don't have a lot of weight on that large piece of wood that you're taking out. It's more like, a, um, it's, it's what you learn in the field. Like if you're at a beginner that, you know, you always try to stick to one third. No, it's not breaking the rules. Up on top, you're doing a rig like this, having a big open and wide hin um, notch is better than a real tiny one. So this guy did really, really good. Nice, nice. The, the next thing I'd like to see it's on the ground, so it's hard. You never really see guys using the porter wrap on the ground. I, I want to see this one here. It's a um, here we go. Now this one, this one is it just it's you can't really see it so good, but it's it's really important to see and, and see what can happen to somebody. Here we go. So the guy's all set up. Okay, so there's the climber here. He has a rig set up, and you really can't see down here. There's a guy off to the side and he's operating a porter wrap. Now, I'm, I'm gonna guess that, you know, I don't know how he set this up, but when, when you're running lines, you gotta make sure that you don't wrap ropes around your, your waist. You don't make a loop and hold it. Um, what can happen if you make a loop and you got a huge amount of weight and something heavy goes and, and maybe your, your, your porter wrap or bullard, whatever you're using on the ground, uh, maybe you didn't get enough wraps or maybe something fails or whatever. If you have a loop, it, it pulls your hand and your hand grips into it, right? And you get locked. 
in a quick situation, you can't always react enough to let go. If you wrap a rope around your hand, worst thing you want to do, you don't want to do that. Worst case scenario, something's too heavy for you, you let go, right? You got to let go. If you don't let go, you could be like pulled right toward the tree. So here we go. I'll put it back on. All right. Here goes the guy. Bam. He just, he flew. I want to back that up again. Hang on. Let me see. Here goes the branch. There he goes. Boom. Right up against the tree. Don't know if he had it on his waist. He might have had, he might have had that rope wrapped around his waist. The way he went toward the tree, it looked like he was going sideways. That, that was a huge limb, right? He did have some kind of device on the ground that um, reduces the the weight, right? You you put like a porter wrap, you put wraps on it. Now, um, instead of, you know, the whole weight of it pulling you, it's meant to like hold it, reduce the weight on you. Now, whatever he did, he may not have had enough wraps on that porter wrap or bullard. And he looks like he probably had his waist wrapped. There's no way he could get out of it. That, that branch was so heavy, it pulled him right to the tree and it looks like he banged his whole body up against the side. Not, not, not a good scenario. Okay, so um, the thing I wanted to show is what it looks like from the ground um, when you're doing it right. So right here, so this right here is a sling and this is a porter wrap. And then this, this line right here, this goes up to the pulley or, you know, up on top block O-ring or pulley, whatever you're going to be using. And you know, depending on the size of the branch you're going to do, or log, whatever, you'll take wraps on this little device. Okay, so here's what it looks like when it's done proper. Here's a few things. Um, here we go. So I see this branch is coming now. It's not super heavy, but there's a guy over here off to the side. He's holding that line, and that's it's coming down. So here comes one. This is one you can see better. Watch how it's. Okay, let me go back to that one. How it was running right through his hand here. Watch here. What's happening is the climber's on top. He's making his cut. And now he's, this guy here on the ground, he's operating the line. So by him letting it run, what he's doing is letting it run, even on the smaller branches. They can't, they don't have to be huge, but who knows, maybe on top, it's not like a, a super large tree. This guy could be out towards some ends. He doesn't want this tree to shake, you know, because he's up there, even though he's tied in, landed in, all that kind of thing. You don't want to have other branches shake while you're making these um, rigging cuts. So his job on the ground is to let it run. And you can see a real good example right here when, when you could see the movement, you could see it bouncing around. This guy's standing in place. He's not running back and forth, but he's there. He has a solid stance. He's not wrapping his hand around the rope. He doesn't have a loop. His hands are open and, and you could see how it's operating. It's running. This is really smooth. And, and this is like meat and potatoes when, when you're doing a porter wrap. This is what you want. So here we go. Here, boom. See how it's running? Nice, nice. So a little critique for me on, on this, when he's running it here, you know, I like to have the rope that's behind me. Um, it, you know, he looks like his spools off to the right and maybe because he's not doing heavy wood, but for me, instead of, instead of having this rope over here, I would like to have it in line where I'm standing. So behind me, and if I'm standing on that, that side, I'll have it behind me that way. Sometimes if you have an angle and say it gets away from you, maybe you didn't do enough wraps. If you, um, have an angle like that, it can yank you. So it could yank you enough to, to make you go off balance and maybe lose the rope or maybe hang on on accident and get pulled toward the porter wrap. Fine point, but, but this guy is really doing the proper way. It looks good. Um, he has a good setup. He's not under the drop zone. He has it even on another tree, so his porter wrap won't be in the... So over here, so he has um, the porter wrap on this side. Now, if he had it on this side of the tree where it's dropping, not such a good idea. But even if he was using this tree here, if he put it on the back side or off to another side where it's where it's not going to be in this drop zone. But all in all, his his uh, porter wrap um, skills here, nice, nice. What you want? Perfect. Even some of the larger wood coming down, 
Nice work. Nice work. That, that, was, that was cool. Well, there you have it. Some fails where these guys really got beat up pretty bad. And then right after that, you had some examples of, of guys who do really nice, stellar, proper work. Um, you know, you could see the contrast when the guys are doing it wrong, what happens to them? You know, sometimes you're real high up in the tree and, and you, you know, you don't always know how strong your, your trees that you're working on. You know, if it's a real good, healthy, strong tree, great. Sometimes you have decay in trees and usually if you're removing, a lot of times it's because they're dying, you know, disease, that kind of thing. So when you're doing big removals and it's a risk tree you definitely want to do your best to do it the right way putting huge shock loads on a tree that you're removing for those reasons that that it's in decline you know you could really go down with a tree if you put a huge shock load you could have a, a whole stem snap and you could be down on the ground with that stem now the guys who are doing it proper, you know, they climb up there, they got all their PPE, they got their safety glasses, helmet, um, they got the proper spikes, lanyard and saddle. Now they're up there, they get everything set up, right? Because it's their life. They're doing it for a living, they're professionals, right? They want to make sure they're going to make it to their family at the end of the day. So they go up there, they set up everything they need. You see, they pick, you know, they make the proper notches. They get the rigging of gear and it's all good, clean gear. It's not all damaged, broken up. They get everything set up. They make their notch. They do the final cut. And then the guy on the ground, he's important. He's down there. And in a lot of times, like it sometimes takes a while to get somebody trained on ropes, you know? So it's nice if another climber is doing it for you. But if you work with a guy and between you, you explain the importance um, of how it is when you're up in the air. Because sometimes people on the ground, they don't know what it's like. You know, when you're up there, it, it's, it can be pretty scary. And the slightest wrong shake can really throw you off your game, could really injure you, you know? Um, once you get somebody who's trained and understands the idea of running, you know, running is when you let the load go and it comes down smoothly. And at the very end of it, they slow the branch down before it hits the ground. You could do it. It could be a progression fast and then super slow down or, you know, maybe when it almost hits the ground. But that that act of holding the rope and managing it so it doesn't do that big shock load on top. Having that big shock load could really mess a guy up in the air. Um, real cool examples of how to do it right. You got to see these guys. Um, you know, they're they're doing it right. You want to watch people like that. Um, I, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Comment, like, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you like what we do. And by all means, um, share our videos. All right, take care. We'll see you next time.